so hey guys welcome back to the channel it's chilo here once again as always if you're seeing me for the first time my name is chioma aka chilo i'm a nigerian and i'm currently studying and living in japan a lot of times i say this studying and living in japan and it is like a passing by right uh, I'm actually pursuing my PhD in Japan. I did my master's first, I graduated, which the video is up, and then I proceeded to doing my PhD or pursuing a PhD degree. It's always in the description box of all my videos, but I understand that not everybody goes through the description box. Why am I making this video? There is something that I've never shared before on this channel, and that's the fact that prior to when my master's was being done, I was done. I was done done it's called academic burnout so at that point i was burnt out i was tired i was exhausted and this is coming from someone that had funding now a lot of times you I, I a lot of times i have people reach out to me and they ask questions revolving around i don't know if i want to do phd i want to do it but another side of me doesn't want to do it and most times it's coming from both those who are funding themselves or those who are not funding themselves a lot of times people are wondering are saying i don't know if i want to work or i want to proceed to phd or there is these people that are saying that a phd holder will not get there's so many school of thoughts out there there is no wrong and there is no right i'm just here to tell you that i went through that too i went through that and then i finally had had peace within myself to proceed to phd right now the truth about the matter this is one very determining point and i'm not one to tell you go oh, make it because your family members are calling you prof or make it because you just want to answer doc or prof it's a decision you have to be very intentional to make why do you want to do phd when do you think you're ready for phd does a master's degree determine it now i know i tread really carefully with giving advices because i believe that every adult knows what they want for their life at the end of the day pray about it make a decision that it's based on your context but I really felt it was necessary to do this video with Dr. Casey. Um, Dr. Casey, he is a PhD holder. He was an Erasmus Mundus scholar and he's currently in the industry. That's another um, confusion. A lot of times people feel like, oh, because you're, you did PhD, automatically you must end up in the classroom. That's one of the school of thought out there, but it's not always the case. You could end up in the industry and so on and so forth. So today's conversation would be with someone who has gone through the route. He's going to tell Tell us, PhD is it compulsory to be in the industry? What's your advice? He graduated a long time ago. Just basically all things PhD. So let's get right into this video, guys. Let me expose myself. Before this, well, before we start recording, we're just just and I was he was asking me how far are you did. I said I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Because this PhD life, there are some days I go to school, I'm feeling like ah, I know what I'm doing. Is it not me again? <laughs> then there are some days you guys are just like, ah, as in, what am I doing? You should remind me, like, okay, what is the purpose of this thing? So today we'll be breaking it all down to those people who are in similar situations, but they don't have who to ask these questions to. A lot of people ask me this question, but I don't have answers to it because as you can see, I go through <laughs> it too. But today we have Dr. Casey. He would introduce himself. Hello, <laughs> Hello I'm Choma. It's, it's nice to be back to this channel over after over a, almost a year. Yeah. Um, I'm really great work that you're doing. It's great to see how this channel is growing. I think it's just an evidence of how much value um, is bringing to people. So please um, keep that up. I mean, I should first start by commending you before introducing myself. So um, I'm Dr. Casey. I'm also a Nigerian, I'm currently resident in Germany. Um, I have a double master's in materials engineering. Um, and also a double PhD in polymer chemistry and organic chemistry, both from the University of Bordeaux in France and um, KIT here in Germany. And today I work as a research scientist for Procter & Gamble. Um, I'm working at the front end innovation for packaging development and for our hair care category. So 
I'm quite excited to be here and I hope I'll be able to share from my experience. I'm going through the PhD journey and also post PhD journey into the industry. And I hope um, this will help to answer some of the questions that, that you have. So the question now is you've tested academia, you've tested in industry, PhD or no PhD? Like where, where do you stand? Like if someone comes and meets you now and say, oh, I just finished my master or I'm about to finish my master's and I don't really know if I want to do PhD or not. Like what do you, what, what would you say to the person? To answer the question, I would say it really depends. And now that we are able to talk to people that have done this like myself, I would always advise when people come to me to say, okay, I've finished my master's. Should I, or should I not do a PhD? My next question is always, why do you need a PhD? That's a very important question. Why do you need a PhD, right? Um, and your why could be anything, but let's start with it. For some people, their why is to fulfill the desire of their parents, which is the example you are giving, right? Um, they want to have a PhD because their parents have always called them dog or they know that it's going to be a thing of pride to their family. And that is a good why. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but once you have identified that as a why, then remember it when you go through the process. So that at the end of it, you will not say, why did I do it? Because you already know your why. So if the why is strong enough, it will allow you to do anyhow, to go through anyhow, to go through any type of process. So you need to start by asking that question, why do I need a PhD? For some people, the reason they think they need a PhD is to be able to build an expertise but the question, next question is, do you need that expertise to do the kind of job you want to do in the future, right? Um, sometimes it's not the case, right? So there are situations where you will realize that if I spend these three years and do more hands-on, on the field experience. training experience, I'll be more relevant to do what I want to do in the future versus going through a PhD, right? So we still come down to that question of why. And there could be a third one, which is your own passion. Right. So maybe you are someone that have always yearned to have a PhD. Like it's just this undying um, desire, desire within you that you know if whatever you become, you will never find fulfillment at least without having a PhD. That is your own individual drive, and it's something that you cannot really explain to someone. Is you just know that deep in my heart, without a PhD, I'm going to be unsatisfied. Yeah. And so when you have that PhD, you have already fulfilled that particular desire. Mm -hmm. What happens after the PhD is not a factor to that desire. So it's like you have closed the chapter. Now I have a PhD, what next? And you decide what next is going to follow, right? So depending on these three, and there could be many more different whys, but we need to start from why do you need a PhD, okay? Um, and the reason why this question of why is so important is because a PhD itself is a lot of sacrifice, mm. right? It's a lot of sacrifice. It's um, um, emotional sacrifice, um, mental uh, stress and sacrifice, um, you know, like... Financial all, self, if you're not funded. Financial, <laughs> everything that would distort your ability to just be like everyone else, right? It's just like you take away your freedom and you lock it down i think um you've said it all but something that really stuck with me is you know we talked about the people that um are probably just going into the phd because oh um doc or prof but there's actually another category of people that are scared of doing let's say phd because there is this school of thought of people that believe like it's waste of time. I mean, I should have, go, let me go and start chasing money already. Like, mm -hmm. you know, adulthood, a scam, part of everything, everything has scam, that kind of school has scam kind of thing. So let me go, go and start chasing the money already in the industry. I will be better than the person that, you know, does PhD at the end of the day. Or there's this group of top people that have this, that will always tell you things like, oh, when you have a PhD, you are it's not easy to pay you something like some some firms don't want you because you're how do they put it above their league too expensive. you're too expensive or you're above their league so there is that fear of ah uh, i want to do this thing but i hope i will not be shooting myself on the leg at the end of the day because i will not want to answer a dog and be broke 
you get what it is like mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how do you balance how what do you what do you have to say to people like that that is that about that school of thought of uh go and chase the mola i mean so what are the perks of having a phd at the end of the day something like that um that, that's a great question and i like the way that you framed it um that's the fear right the fear yeah. of so you 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 want to do it. Um, you feel you can do it, but you are afraid of one. Um, is it not a waste of time? PhDs get stipend. Um, that it's not enough in terms of how much uh, somebody that has that same qualification in an industry is going to earn, plus or minus, right? Um, so you are not going to earn more, um, relatively. You wouldn't have more money than that person again, depending on the job. Um, but number two, which you really said that is important, is that fear of does this make me too expensive um, for for industries to to hire? Um, so you see, when when we are afraid of something, is good. I think fear is a good um, um, way to make us realize that something is important. I mean, when you are afraid of something, it means you have put some thought into it, right? Um, and so on the on the first part, which is those that are afraid of say they don't make money. Um, doing PhD. So the, the answer to that is that it really depends. It depends on when, when somebody says, I rather want to work than do a PhD. The question is always, which job? Do you have the job yet? And do you have a PhD yet? Right? So let's say there's somebody called A. A wants to apply for a PhD, or A wants to apply for a PhD, but afraid that they will not earn more. So money is a driver here, which is great. There's nothing wrong with money being a driver for, for anything, decisions that we make. But now if A was to get a PhD in a particular place, how much does this come as a stipend that they would earn versus somebody that is working in an industry, how much would they earn? In, in, on average, the person working as a job, right, um, would be paid more. If we want to look at the overall cost, I, I like to be analytical. I would say that, let's say somebody is supposed to work in Germany and the person wants to do a PhD or the person wants to work in a company with a master's. Obviously, the person with the master's will earn more, right? If the person was to get into an industry that would pay on average, let's say around $50,000 per year, flat, um, gross salary. The person with a PhD, even if you have a very good PhD funding, would likely not get over 40,000, right? Um, so it means there is an obvious benefit in terms of, yeah, with those that go into the, with the masters. Now, um, if this is a drive, the question is always, how does this add up into the long term? I give an example. If I were to come into, um, like if I was to join a particular company as an expert, in, as an expert, right? Um, and somebody that did a master's and didn't have a PhD, and that company really needs somebody as an expert with a PhD, then I would earn more than that person with a master's, right? And now the question would always remain, does that three years I was doing a PhD justify how much time I would need to earn enough money to compensate for the time that I was not working? I think that would also be a lot of complexities, really depending on the kind of job the person is doing. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. If, if your drive is money, and I've seen people that come to me and say, my drive is really money, uh, <laughs> this PhD doesn't look like it's going to help me to make that money now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. I would say, if that's your drive, go ahead. Yeah. Um, because it's a fear that is justified. And another point there is um, making sure that you do an internship. Yeah. Internships yeah. are very, very, very important yeah. in an industry. Because again, you have already channeled your mind that after my master's, I want to make money. I don't want to do a PhD. So start early to start preparing. So don't get at the end of your master's and say, do I do PhD or do master? It's something that should have started earlier because you need to be taking certain steps Strategic towards that problem. direction. Exactly. That was the first group of people, those that are considering money or going for PhD. Now, the second group, which is the one you said about PhD being too, um, too expensive, yeah. I think that's, that's really not true. Um, so, for example, if you were to apply for a job, in my opinion, if you were to apply for a job that don't need a PhD, um, and you're applying with a PhD because that was what is available, I think it's a completely different conversation. Like, okay. conversation in the sense that nobody is going to pay you more because for a job. Exactly, they wouldn't. So, for example, I put up a job. I said, I'm looking for somebody with so, 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 so skills. 
right? And your salary is going to be this thousand per year. If you apply, whether you have 10 PhDs, I'm not interested. No, the recruiter is not interested because if they don't need those, your expertise to do the job. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So they will not say, oh, because you have a PhD, I don't think I want to hire you. In fact, mm. companies that really need people with certain expertise, like really core competence and have a PhD, already have a price, a, a salary structure for people with PhD. So the point is having a PhD and or not do, going for a PhD because you are afraid you will be too expensive. I think that's really not true. Means at the end of the day, um, the fear of not doing a PhD because you become too expensive. The question is how expensive? Right? <laughs> that um, you will not be, somebody will not- Afford you. It. No, no, I think that's entirely not true. Okay. So you said something again. You're not being implicating yourself. You said something again of you have the job, you have the PhD before you can have this conversation. I'm not like you don't have a job by your three PhD. So if there are actually some people like that, that I even know someone that got a funding in quote to the US and this person gets, um, I think it's a direct PhD, I can't remember, and then gets a very good job almost at the same time you know you know how these things can be now because you're you don't want to put your eggs in one basket you're applying Mm -hmm. for so many things at the same time you're applying for like i remember when i was applying to come to japan i was applying for meds i was applying for a job i was every just Mm -hmm. put it everywhere everywhere (laughs) (laughs) and coincidentally this u.s thing clicks they see this week and the next two weeks or so that email from a very big company comes so there's that confusion of do I want to, what's the use of this PhD? It's not to get a job at the end of the day that will pay you. And this one will pay me. Well. Like there's that confusion of you have the job, you have the PhD, or you have the, mm-hmm. what do I do for some people? The, 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 and and you are, I've, I've also had, um, seen people that had this confusion. They have been in this confusion, um, many, and I have even one recent experience. Um, so, there are two things that, again, this is my own personal opinion, right? Um, at the end of the day, for some people and for most people, the end goal is how do I earn enough to take care of my family, take care of my, my needs and all that, right? Comfortable. Um, exactly. And this can be done through different ways. This can be done through some people trade and they still make that money and they use the money and take care of their need. Some people go to school and then they get a job and then they take care of their needs. Some people even go to further school. And, you know, so at the end of the day, there are there is something that comes on top of the money. So for me personally, I think um, if, if you have a good job, right? A good job, we need to define what good means, right? <laughs> In terms of, because for some people, a good job could mean a job that pays in Nigeria 500,000 Naira a month, right? Mm-hmm. Or 400,000 or 1 million. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, this is, a, let's, let's say an example. Let's use a practical example. Let's say somebody gets a job and I've seen that, let me use an experience that I knew. Somebody gets a job in Nigeria that pays 500,000, okay? Um, then the person gets a PhD offer to Germany. Right, and the job in Germany is it was a that scholarship that pays almost around one thousand nine hundred to one thousand a month. Um, so if you put the exchange, it's already more than the job the person gets. But it's a PhD. You do the PhD. You don't know what ends up after the PhD. Yeah, what there's a lot of uncertainties. Exactly what happens after. So the question becomes, why don't I just concentrate this job now? Now, now, now. I know <laughs> than going into a PhD that. I don't know what will come out after three years. After eight, yeah. Now, so what I advise, what I asked the person was, what is important to you, right? What is important to you? If what is important to you is that you have a family now, today is not in the future. You have a family now; they need to feed now. You don't go and do a PhD, yeah, right? Yeah. You don't go and do a PhD where you will probably, of course, that money might look a lot for somebody that is doing the exchange to Nigeria. Yeah. But you that you are living here, by the time you pay your rent, pay rent. 
electricity uh, packs. This one, now it has finished. <laughs> it has finished. So I now ask him, what is important to you? You have a wife, you have a child. So you, if you look at it from the position of, oh, this could be a way for me to move them to Germany. So I know we will not end more, but long-term plan, I move them to Germany. Great, you take the PhD because it's a route. It's not just about the PhD. Means but let's say it was a, exactly, you are looking after, like on top of this, I'm getting something like this for my family. But after, if the question was, if the scenario was, this is a PhD that I will barely pay my rent with what is left, and my family will now begin to struggle to eat, because if they are struggling to eat, you will not do a good PhD, why? They will be on the call with you every day. Yeah. How will you concentrate? You are mentally disturbed, right? So we need to really ask the first question of what is important now, and then what is important in the future? If it is survivor, you need to survive first before you know <laughs> whether it's a PhD, exactly, so for our future. You have to live today first. <laughs> I'm always very practical about that. Like, you mm -hmm. need to live now first, right? Yeah. Um, PhD comes on top. So you, if you look at it like, oh, I'll make this sacrifice. My family would understand. They would not starve. But we will go through these three years. But after the three years, this is why I need the PhD. Like, after these three years, I know that with this PhD, I can give myself you, there's a probability, so you cannot, I would do not do a PhD with an end probability of zero. Then why are you even doing it? Mm. Like, I'm doing this PhD because at the end of this PhD, I'm going to go into this field. And I will be able to, if I go into yes. this field, which is now your incentive, yeah. this is what yeah. I can earn. So okay. I can either be earning five, 500,000 now, or by the time I get this PhD in this field that it's giving this and this, I have seen people with a PhD in that field. This is where they work. This is what these people are being paid. And those are the kind of exercises you can do upfront. Because when you are going through it, your eyes will be on the long term, like this is where I want to go to. Oh, the job is paying 1 million. I know that after this PhD, with the way I'm positioning myself, the job I will get is 10 million, mm. right? So that is what would help you to make Most that time. decision. But please, not at the cost of survival. Yeah. <laughs> Anything, nothing is worth not surviving just in case you guys are watching so casey is an author like i don't know small people i know big people. <laughs> <laughs> he's an author of a book and he really poured out his heart into that book he's gone through it or you know it's like i said they have seen it and finished <laughs> <laughs> they have seen it. what i is book war in the walls of academic is it <laughs> suffering is it suffering is it in everything is it in walking <laughs> navigating life every single thing so that was a book he poured out his heart in so i want to talk about that but i want to talk about that book i want to talk about passion i want to talk about career paths career choice just literally talk to a lot of people are watching this video and they're probably undergrad they don't even know what they want to do next mm -hmm. i remember my undergrad self i did not have idea i'm grateful for the community i'll keep saying it mm -hmm. i had good sounding people around me you know but not everybody has that so just pour into us touch touch the touch our head <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean yeah you're you're very correct um uh, my book is just published um, um the title of the book is also my personal philosophy i think many people that are going to watch this video already know my hashtag yeah. on linkedin yeah. See, we all win. Um, and that is also the, the title of the book. I will give you the cover so you can also include it um, when you share the video. And um, so that's a personal philosophy. And I would try to use that and touch this area I talked about, passion, um, and really why I wrote that book, right? Um, if you look at the dedication of the book, I dedicated the book to all those that seek hope that they might find, right? So the book was really about how do I give hope to people based on my story, right? So, and how am I using my story to not only inspire other people, but to guide them and coach them, which is the whole idea of the DKM mentorship platform that I founded around three years ago. And within the last three years, we have achieved over 140 scholarship winners with over $6.5 million worth of funding. So, yeah, and, and, and so why is this important? 
you you said something that I really really want to still reiterate, which is the value of community, right? Um, without a community as an undergraduate, no matter how brilliant you are, you will get lost. Yeah. Without my older brother, that was my mentor and coach. I had no idea. I was, you know, go to school. I go to school. I'm brilliant. I pass A, 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 A first but class. what's next? <laughs> what happens with it? How does that add up to where you are going yeah. to? No idea. So it was good to have him um, as a guide that would tell you, okay, now take this exam. Apply to this school. Check this one. Um, why I wrote this book was especially for people that don't necessarily have that community, mm. Right. So that they can go through the kind of, you can look at the life of, oh, this is how I am now. You can look at where you are standing currently and see where I was standing at that point and begin to see what are the decisions I was making. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those decisions I've made, and you know, when you write a book, it looks like everything was chronological. It wasn't, mm -hmm. right? Some of those experiences I knew after 10 years, right? But now writing a book is like putting those things together and helping somebody to there is nothing new under, under the, the sun. sun. <laughs> nothing. Don't think you are the first. No, you are not. Ask yourself, who is doing what I want to do in my future today? Go and check those people's profile. Check their background. Check the programs they did. Right? Try to chat, um, chat with them, follow them, read their books. Try to use them to build your skill set for the future. Thank you so much. Like, um, you, when you were talking, something came to my mind and it just made me to keep laughing. It's funny that when someone is talking, when, now you're saying this thing, you're, you know you're present. But when you were going through it then, it's not this easy to talk about because- No, it's not. I, I'm listening to you. I'm just like, ah, see how you're summarizing your suffer. Somebody would think it was just a one day. <laughs> it was just a one day thing. You're admiring Dr. Casey now. He's talking with all his partial sustainability, best PhD poster, oil and gas, this one, this one. But <laughs> it was not like this. I remember no. the first time I met uh, Dr. Casey, I think it was a post of yours or so where he was saying something in the line of, um, the laptop crashed or so for a scholarship. Yes. He's applying for. Yeah. Like, he has been through it. All about <laughs> this gang 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 that he's doing. Like, he's been through it. All. So please, yeah. this guy, the book is power part. The title of the book gives it for me over and over again. Anytime I see that book, the title of the book gives it till we all win. Especially in this time and era where people will go to where there is light and then lock the door so another person will not exactly. enter. But this is someone that has gone through the light and has said okay i want all of us to win it's not like only one person should win i'm going to put the link in the description box of this video and on the screen i'll also put dr casey's like details as much as he permits on the screen as much as possible guys like i feel like um you know this thing they used to say that if you want to hide something from is it a Nigerian person or a black person who put it in a, put it in a book? We are that generation that will, we are pass, we will pass it. We are not that generation. We are changing that narrative. That experience is not necessarily the best teacher. Learn from others. Somebody's experience. So. <laughs> Learn from others. Thank you so much, Dr. Casey. It's always a pleasure having you on this channel. The Thank pleasure you is mine. guys so much for, you know, watching this video up until this point. If you watch it up until this point, drop a comment. I hope it was helpful. Share. You don't know who you will be helping. And see you next time on Chilo Talks. Bye for now, guys.